Let me ask you all a question. Whether you're watching this on Instagram or YouTube, do you believe in ghosts? I definitely do. I most definitely believe in ghosts. And you know what? If you were to see a ghost in your house, in your car, in your yard, in the same neighborhood with you or everywhere you go, anywhere, I just got one question for you. Who you going to call? How's it going to my officially 100 subscribers on YouTube and all of my followers on Instagram? Welcome to the next video on Sterling on Cinemas. That's Cinemas with an S. And today I'll be giving you my review on Ghostbusters. If you are new to this video or to this playlist or new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, join the club, keep up to date with all things Sterling on Cinemas, and most importantly, watch it from zero to last. And the same thing goes if you're on Instagram. If you're new to my page, don't forget to follow me and share it on your story with your friends and family and comment if you have anything to say on the movie, anything whatsoever. Let's begin. Let's hunt. Now, after members, after the members of a team of scientists lose their cushy positions at a university in New York City, they decide to become Ghostbusters to wage a high-tech battle with the supernatural for money. They stumble upon a gateway to another dimension, a doorway that will release evil upon the city. The Ghostbusters must now save New York from complete destruction. Now, here's my take on the story. To anybody who grew up with the original Ghostbusters, I am sorry to say that I did not fully enjoy it. I did not fully enjoy it. And some of you who are watching, you be like, Sterling, how can you not enjoy Ghostbusters? That is a great fantasy comedy. Listen to me. I have a few good things to say about the movie. And I also have a few questions, just as any other good film critic does. You love the, you love a few things. There, If there are things you don't like, you point it out, and you'll have questions. Now, as far as sci-fi movies go, this movie was definitely of its time, definitely a 1984 sci-fi type with the visuals and the logic that it follows when it comes to psychological, physiological, and scientific studies of paranormal existence. During its time in 1984, I am sure Ghostbusters was loved specifically for the idea of catching ghosts and how they pulled it off. Every ghost movie before Ghostbusters always had the ghosts in a remote location chasing the victim in a, like in a, like in abandoned warehouse in the woods and each spirit was only there to hunt because it was what the horror trope that they always stuck with and still kind of stick with today. Luckily, the Ghostbusters franchise is not considered a horror series, but a straight up fantasy comedy series. When you consider how the Ghostbusters idea was a new thing in the 80s, there were not a lot of designs they could give a ghost because that was the only look they had. It was it was this color right here. But um, though the most notorious of the clan were Slimer, the Slime Monster, and the Marshmallow Man. The comedy in the movie fits the weird and wackiness of the science in the movie as each of the Ghostbusters investigate each paranormal perpetrator. Now, the characters. This is my negative point right here. One of my biggest questions while watching the movie was, how exactly did Dr. Vank, Peter Vankman, Bill Murray, Ray Stantz, Dan Aykroyd, Egon Spengler, Harold Ramis and Winston Zedmore, Ernie Hudson, become Ghostbusters in the first place? I mean, for, for as long as pop culture has been alive, every heroic team, every heroic team, group of protagonists has never started out as a as a superpowered beings or an individual with special abilities or skills or knowledge or wherever they specialize in wherever they are good at whatever they're most famous for there would always be some type of origin or path to becoming on that to becoming that individual to becoming that person it would make more sense if they each came from different backgrounds of study with the paranormal existence. But at least they showed us that Peter Venkman specializes in parapsychology and basic psychology as evident in the opening act 
with the two students. And as for the scientists, we did not get an explanation on what caused them to start hunting for ghosts in the first place. We just see four guys, well, three started out, who just want to hunt, who were interested in the idea of paranormal activity and exploring it and subduing it, exterminating all ghosts, and then just catching it. And then we just get a fourth guy who just wants to join the team out of the blue. But not only that, it didn't make sense. We we see where the first paranormal activity occurred, but it didn't make sense how these scientists could just show up to the scene with untested proton packs. The role that they each play in trying to investigate the imminent emergence of the paranormal god, Zul, the, the gatekeeper, is the most idealistic thing in the movie by comparison. And to, end, and to compare it to the end times in the Bible and through other myths, which... FYI, does not even match up, is not even accurate to what Dan Aykroyd's character stated, Revelation 7.10. It has nothing to do with whatever he said. It, it, it is no myth about the end times. It's not an accurate explanation of how the end times will even play out. Rotten Tomatoes gives Ghostbuster a 97% score. Now, Ghostbusters may have had it all. They may have had the flashy effects cartoonish looking monsters, and one of the best theme songs ever. Ghostbusters! You know, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Unfortunately, the most intriguing investigations from any group of exterminators ever did not stop the writing of its characters from feeling left in the air. Ghostbusters deserves, deserves. I was tempted to give it a very, 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 very bad score. You know, I'm not going to give, realistically as a critic, I would never give no movie a score that low because they is that's just unnecessary. It, no movie, a bad movie, a movie that you don't even love like that should never really get a score that low. But I think it deserves six point seven SOs out of ten because uh, even on that scale, it was lean more on the good. It was lean more on the good side as in the sixties, on the sixties rating. So six point seven SOs out of ten. That is my official rating on the Ghostbusters of 1984 and that is my review on Ghostbusters. Y'all can let me know what y'all think of this fantastical comedy in the section below, in the comments below, and I'll see y'all later with my next bunch of videos. Peace out.